C'est la première exposition de Hélène Stotsky en Europe. On est très fiers d'être l'institution qui la présente. C'est un pari audacieux que de montrer une production photographique euh, avec un ensemble de tableaux abstraits. Évidemment, il y a une raison très forte à ça. C'est que, euh, d'abord, la même artiste est à l'origine de ces travaux, qui, à première vue, semblent différents, alors qu'en fait, ces tableaux abstraits nous donnent une lecture complètement différente, justement, des sujets photographiques. It's just the mediums that compel me uh, to make, so I'm drawn to um, photography for certain reasons, but I'm also interested in, in process and in um, objects, in color, in texture. When I photograph, I am looking for uh, almost a level of banality that is then heightened um, through emotion um, or perceived emotion, perceived circumstance in the photograph itself. I'm interested in how groups of people um, convey a certain type of complexity, how we have to try to understand relationships and psychologies, not just of one person or two people, um, but of a group. Uh, those complexities are endlessly fascinating to me, and how those complexities can be uh, skewed, uh, how one viewer will perceive the complexity one way and another person will have a completely different read on it. Uh, this is what fascinates me. It's, it's not just the situation, it's what we throw onto the situation from our own uh, perspective, point of view in the world. Uh, so those are all reasons why specifically gr uh, photographing groups of people is interesting to me um, and photographing <coughs> people um, who in my mind are uh, in very ordinary circumstances but by virtue of the photograph um, the lighting perhaps, um, the hand gesture, uh, all of these things elevate it to a level that takes it um, above and beyond uh, the ordinary. So, of course, the idea of that show was to bring together paintings and photographs and um, propose an audacious uh, statement about many things, about contact, but about also um, uh, materiality, color, values that are linked to uh, the subject, but also uh, the visual forms of the subjects. I think one of the things that this exhibition makes clear is that in my photographs, I use formal constructs to elevate uh, the message, the subject matter, and I think that becomes clear when we look at a picture like this, William, we see five faces centered around uh, an orange chair, and then we look at this painting and we see that there are similar colors being used to create a certain type of uh, formality. And I think in my own process and in my own experience, I've seen how something that I've created a decade later continues to carry the formal elements. And then I recognize in my photographs that I use those same formal tropes, colors to create or to make clear, to elevate content. the interest of bringing together those mediums. It's centered on your way to work on gestures and distance and proximity. For me, those are all about that. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and this is very strong because, for example, in your tinted paintings, 
as you call them. It is an abstract work, but it, it's, the most important is to say that this is all about a gesture, a repetition of the same gesture. Mm -hmm. You're covering the surface, right. and maybe you can speak about that. But before you get into details on that technique, that is quite amazing because it's all about controlling and losing control. But so for me, the interest is that in the photography also, and then this is like a very dynamic circulation, um, gestures are all important, but they are not yours. They're the one of your subjects. But you, you are involved in that gesture because in, you are always near and almost there's like a danger. Something will happen. So you're still about the control and the lack of control is circulating between the two. And this is for me something quite strong that, that give us um, a proximity and at the same time a, a, a dangerous uh, relationship with the work. In terms of the process, the way I made these photographs and the way I made these paintings, there is a process of repetition with the painting. It's applying the watercolor over and over again until the line bleeds and um, the pigment loses control. And then that's really when the, be uh, when the painting begins in my mind, because that's when it's almost like the painting takes over, it takes control, it, it's making its own decisions, and that's very exciting for me. Likewise, when I'm photographing, in these particular instances that were in a contrived situation, so this woman and I went uh, to the gym, and she had the bat, and she was swinging it over and over again, so there was repetition in that action. And then at a certain moment, when you're working with someone, there is a, a moment of comfort when, in some ways, they forget what's going on and you kind of forget what's going on. And that's, again, when, it's, when it feels like it begins, when that control is lost, and it gets interesting. And it gets interesting maybe because uh, the physical gesture of swinging the bat gets looser someone's face relaxes into it. And that's when, after I've taken, you know, the, the rolls and rolls of photographs of an almost identical thing, that's when I look at the photograph and find the one that expresses that point when it really began, just like with the painting, the moment where the control is lost is, is where it begins. I, I really love that image because um, there's a lot of things happening here too. It's, it's, it's a group portrait, of course. Um, there are also like uh, specific, very tense relationship, but at the same time, for example, when we look at those two, this one we, we see is behind and in our space because his head is bigger. So it's all false in a way. It's true and false, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, constructed it's amazing construction but at the same time it seems to be you know thinking like that so there's a lot of um, paradox contradiction in there but for me what is really strong um, is the fact that with light with your play with materiality with whiteness and blackness you um, give like an, an equal tone to anyone and then there's a total confusion. We don't know who is who because, you know, every, everyone is black, everyone is not. And I think this is, this is amazing image and, uh, and message also. This one was made at the end of this particular series of work uh, with the, black, uh, the platinum prints. And it was made in a quieter moment. So we saw some of the photographs that have a lot of action, that have the repetitive actions. And you can read those as perhaps very aggressive. And certainly, I was feeling aggressive when I made them. And then these are much quieter. So this one, and there's another silhouette in this series, are meant to be more uh, sensitive in their, in the light quality. <clears throat> and I think what is consistent throughout all of my photographs is this confusion between who is a man and who is a woman. 
And here we see, because of the silhouettes, we can't really identify certain signifiers that might you know, tell us how, what skin color is. And so it's just another way and another moment to obscure that so that we read it simply as silhouettes that we have, and we have to contend with only that information. And certainly that was the point. And I think that there is a certain romance to this picture, certainly, and that was intended. And I think there's a certain tenderness that was also intended. It's just the mediums that compel me uh, to make. So I'm drawn to um, photography for certain reasons, but I'm also interested in, in process and in um, objects, in color, in texture. But more than anything else, it's the making of that I'm compelled to do in each specific medium. This is one of the hand-tinted pieces. Uh, its title is Kona. And throughout this series and the other photographs in the exhibition, I'm playing with photographic processes that are historical. And I was always interested in this relationship between almost defunct photographic processes like platinum printing, uh, hand tinting, which was always in the realm of hobby, and postmodern content, and how those two antagonized each other. So there are platinum prints, there are gelatin silver prints, there are hand tinted gelatin silver prints that are quite large. Also, within this body of work, there are images that are constructed, and we've talked a little bit about those already. And there are also images that are more documentary in nature, and it was my hope and my purpose that I mix the two, so that like everything else that became abstracted, those two genres, when in the same body of work, became unknowable.